Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. <clears throat> that website is a series of eight self-study lessons whose purpose is to try and help anybody improve their lives, their relationships, and their families. The lessons are based on my experience over 31 years of being a family systems therapist. I work with thousands of people <clears throat> who have taught me the contents of this website. Um, the second of eight lessons in the website has to do with improving the effectiveness of your communication. I've studied this for 40 some years and I'm impressed by how average people, probably like you, often are fuzzy or unaware of why they communicate. Ask yourself this question, see what comes into your mind. Why do I communicate? Um, whatever your answer is, this video will offer you perhaps a new way of looking at this dynamic that we all go through as social critters as we interact with each other. <clears throat> I want to propose that there are only five reasons that infants, kids, teens, adults, nations communicate with each other. If you can't name uh, what these needs are, you probably are communicating less effectively than you could be. The first one, I suspect, may surprise you. Of five major driving needs that we all try to fill when we're with other people, <clears throat> the first need I propose is respect. Would you agree that by yourself and with other people, your comfort level depends on how well you respect yourself and how well you feel your partner in the moment respects you. We seek respect. We seek to feel worthy, worthwhile, dignified. We seek to protect our integrity. I'm a good person. That's one reason we communicate to other people, to gain or maintain our self-respect or mutual respect. How do you feel about that? Uh, try it out. The second of five needs that we try to fill by communicating with other people <clears throat> is the need to vent. I suspect that in the last day or so, you've had occasion on the phone, in person, in writing, even texting, to express your thoughts, your feelings, your needs, your perceptions to one other person and you needed that person to listen, to want to listen, to value you, to respect you, to care about you, and to validate your needs as opposed to reject them or deny them or argue about them. <coughs> so a second common need that people try to fill when they're with each other is venting. I just need to talk. Would you listen to me? Parenthesis and ex accept me and respect me. That's venting. The third and perhaps more obvious need that we all try to fill momentarily or over time is the need to cause action. We communicate with little people and big people to get them to do something, either to start something or stop something. I want you to look at me more often. I want you to stop chewing with your mouth open. One of the subclasses of action that we're all uh, prone to uh, seek is to change the distance, the emotional distance between ourselves and our partner. We communicate in order at times to bring them closer, uh, to drive them further away, or to keep them right where they are. Don't change. Don't change. <clears throat> so seeking action 
getting somebody to do something or to stop doing something is a major reason, it's usually unconscious, that we communicate with other people. <clears throat> so, we communicate to seek and maintain respect, to vent, to cause action. <clears throat> Another thing we uh, communicate for is to give or get information. This also is pretty obvious. Um, I ask you, why are you watching this video? You reply, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you ask, well, why did you make this video? I say, to try and pass on all that I've learned to people who are interested in improving their lives. We give and get information sometimes regardless of what our partner needs, uh, sometimes because of what our partner needs. So that's a fourth reason we communicate, is to, uh, is to get information. The fifth and last reason we communicate, in my opinion, is to avoid discomfort. I want to talk to you first about uh, filling the car with gas before we run out somewhere in the middle of an important trip. We communicate to try and avoid feeling badly, getting into a conflict, losing something, uh, many other things, many other sources of discomfort. <coughs> uh, a common source of discomfort for many of us in social situations is silence. Being close with another person, physically close together, and being silent is often uncomfortable for people. Is that true of you? People in an elevator sometimes, or in a plane seat, sitting close by a stranger, sometimes feel compelled to speak, to break uncomfortable or avoid uncomfortable silence. So these are five reasons that cause us all to communicate. Did you know these five reasons before you watched this? Could you name these reasons? You probably knew these, but you didn't know you knew. And you say, well, yeah, okay, so there are five reasons, so what? Why should you pay any attention to this? In average conversations, like, um, hey, have you seen my shoes? We don't need to focus on these five needs. In important relationships and situations, we do need to know why are we communicating with each other. One of the reasons is your needs for communication and mine may clash. For instance, if I want to cause action and you want to vent, our needs don't match. We will then have, quote, a communication problem, unquote, and probably an ineffective communication, unless, here's the best option, you're aware of your needs, I'm aware of my needs, and we talk about them as partners. I say, I'd really like to get you <clears throat> to think about buying a new car. You say, well, you know, right now, I, I've got this real major problem at work. I, I'd really like to describe it to you. Okay. That opens the way when each person identifies their needs and takes an interest in their partner's needs as being just as important, not more or less, unless it's an emergency. <clears throat> that opens the way for communication partners to say, oh, well, how can we both get our needs met? And I say, uh, would you be willing to talk about buying a new car for the next 10 minutes? And then I'll be quiet and I want to hear about your situation at work. It's a little simplistic, but notice the idea. Each one of us attempts to get our needs met in a respectful way. That's problem solving. It's also negotiating. It's based on an attitude of mutual respect. I see my needs and your needs being equally important in this situation at this time. If either partner does not have that attitude, 
I want to get my way. I don't care about your way. That's going to result in lose-lose ineffective communication. <clears throat> this is why it's important to learn why do you communicate. The second of two major reasons is if you want to communicate effectively, you need to know why you're communicating. I propose that effective communication, as opposed to open and honest, which is meaningless, effective communication implies I get my needs met, and ideally you get your needs met. <clears throat> if you don't need, if you don't know what you need, how can you tell if you're communicating effectively? Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? The key to this is the first of seven skills you will discover in Lesson 2 in the Break the Cycle website. Lesson 2 focuses on effective communication. It proposes seven skills you can learn anytime, any day, starting today. The first and keystone skill is awareness. What this video has meant to show you is one of the key things you can learn to become aware of in important communication is why am I communicating and why are you communicating? I hope you'll experiment with this and notice if the outcomes of your communication don't improve as you become more aware. Thanks for watching.